Welcome to WXTV, your online source for weatherization training. Today's episode focuses on the safety and efficiency of gas forced air heating. Our master plumber Mike will take us through the steps that a weatherization professional would use to test, clean, and tune one of these popular systems. Hey Mike. Hey Ben. Nice Always to see you. Good to see you. What are we going to be doing on this furnace today? Uh, we're going to do some uh, diagnostics on all the combustion appliances, make sure they're running correctly. Uh, want to make sure that everything uh, after the weatherization work's done, that it's still going to work right and uh, fix anything that needs to be fixed for safety reasons and so forth. Going to do a clean and tune also? Yep, we'll pull the uh, blower mm -hmm. motor clean it, make sure the uh, filters are replaced, and uh, anything that needs to be cleaned up to make the furnace run uh, efficiently, we will take care of that as well. Good. Well, lead the way. Let's All hop right, in and check it on. out. Hey, Mike. Oh, hey, hey man. Just in time. Uh, let me give you a hand with that. Thanks. Okay, you got it. Yep. Yeah. And I gotta get this measurement over okay. here. Okay. Grab that one there. Okay. Yo. So what are we measuring? Well, I'm trying to figure out how much uh, volume we have in this room so that I can uh, determine if there is enough combustion air supply to these uh, two appliances: this water heater and this furnace here. So, how do we know how much these uh, these two appliances need? Well, what I did is I looked at, this is a uh, 138,000 BTU furnace, and this is a uh, 34,000 BTU water heater. So total, I need 172,000 BTUs of uh, fuel input. And when I use the uh, um, codes, it tells me uh, that I need 50 cubic feet for every 1,000 BTUs. So I do the math, and it looks like... Uh, is this going to make it? No, this is only good for 66,000 BTUs, so we're going to have to prescribe uh, direct combustion air from outside into this room. Gotcha. And uh, that'll make these burn better. All right. So, Well, what's our, uh, what's our first step then besides uh, determining if it has enough combustion air? Well, when I come into one of these rooms, that's usually what I do, is I just uh, take a look at the appliances, look for problems like, uh, for example, this is duct tape here. Um, Not good for duct work, despite no, the name. No, for one, it's a combustible, and uh, this isn't. This is the flue pipe, and uh, this has to be six inches from any combustible. Uh, so this actually could start fire. So this is not uh, not appropriate. So we'll here. get that fixed. Yeah. All right. And I just at first I just generally look around, look for obvious problems before I start um, all my diagnostics work. But okay. I always look at combustion air. That's my the first thing I look for. All right. You ever just start it up then? Uh, yeah, I do. Yeah? Yeah. Can we start it? Yeah. Yeah. We, uh, power's on. We have to go upstairs and turn the thermostat on and uh, we'll get this thing running. You want to hear it run? Yeah. Let's All hear right. it. You going to head up and start it? Yep. I'll go do that. All right. Good deal. Yeah, I think it's running, Mike. Yeah, I can hear it from here. Yeah. That's a loud one. Yeah, she purrs. Yeah. All right. So we got it running. Uh, we probably need to check how much gas it's using, huh? Yep. This is a natural gas system, so right now would be a really good time to go out to the gas meter and we'll clock the gas meter and confirm the right amount of fuel is being supplied to this furnace. All right. Let's go check it out. Check it. Yeah. Gas meter in India somewhere? Or? Yeah, it might be. The meter 
reader might uh, not like this place. <laughs> Look at how easy it is to read this meter. <laughs> the meter reader has a trail to the place. There's got to be a better one. Hmm. You find a way in, Mike? Yeah, uh, this is not an easy meter to get to to read. Ugh. Okay, this is like the hardest meter I've ever had to read. Okay, so we're clocking this meter, the furnace is on, and we're going to time how many cubic feet go through this thing in a certain amount of time. And boom, here we go. Okay, so we have one cubic feet in 10, 20, 25 seconds, and I'll use that. One cubic foot in 25 seconds. Oh. Welcome to the jungle. Oh, hey, look at this. Look at this dryer vent here. It's, uh, most of it's covered up. Notice that. Looks like mice can get in there pretty easy too. Sure does. Yeah, yeah. no anti-critter yeah. mechanism. Yeah, that probably needs a little work. Well, Mike, what'd you find out? Well, Ben, after, uh, after doing the math, it looks like that furnace is burning 124,500 BTUs per hour. Now, uh, that's 138,000 BTU furnace, so sure. that looks a little low. However, we're at an elevation of 5,000 feet here. Right. So for every 1,000 feet above sea level, we have to derate 4%. So really, we need to derate this by 20% here. So that comes out to 110,400 uh, BTUs per hour. So it looks to me like we're about 12% over firing. And what we need to do is we'll put the combustion analyzer on there and see how well our burn really is. That'll tell us a whole lot. Um, but we may need to put smaller orifices in be okay. because this is over firing. Over firing, we could get some sooting and some carbon monoxide. Yeah, problems. exactly. Yeah. Okay. Exactly. Good deal. So, well, yep. it looks like uh, looks like you've got a lot of work to do, and I've got a few other houses to check on. So, I'll let All you right. get to it. Thanks. We'll see much. you later. Yeah. Thanks. Take care. Okay, so uh, a couple more things we'll take a look at on this unit um, are these two units. Uh, looks to me like uh, this is the relief valve for the water heater. I know we're talking about furnaces here, but uh, this is supposed to be within around six inches off the floor. Um, and so we would actually prescribe a addition of some pipe to this to get it to the floor. That's a code uh, requirement. Uh, another thing I noticed is the draft hood on this is part of it's out of the uh, um, out of its place it's kind of at an angle uh, we'll probably try to fix that as well um, and then real quick usually what I do is I'll measure the uh, the ductwork the return this is 10 by uh, 23 inches so I have 230 square inches of uh, return air I need uh, two square inches for every thousand BTUs of output. 
And when you do the math on a 138,000 BTU furnace, 70% uh, efficient, that becomes 96,000 BTUs of output. So I need 96 square inches and I have 230 square inches. So I'm, I have plenty of return air. That's a pretty good sign uh, that my ductwork is uh, sized big enough. Uh, the next step is uh, I usually just open these up and, and take a look at you know what's inside. Okay, so we'll take a look at what's inside this unit. Uh, this is a standing pilot furnace. So uh, here's the thermocouple. Inside here, I can see that the pilot's lit. Uh, here's our gas valve. Um, looks like this is a uh, 24 volt gas valve. Uh, natural gas. Uh, we do have the ability to um, shut the gas off to the pilot with this manual valve right here. Um, and uh, there I just uh, shut the gas off to the pilot. <clears throat> um, once the pilot's out, uh, if the thermocouple cools down, then uh, this valve shuts off and will not let gas go to the, uh, the manifold here. This has four burners. Uh, these are actually uh, uh, monoport bur burners. Uh, they're some of the first monoport style burners that uh, I've seen. Um, they actually shoot a flame into the heat exchanger. Uh, that click that uh, was the thermocouple, um, it had cooled down enough to where this, uh, this uh, uh, electromagnet let go and shut the gas off for the whole gas valve. So now there's no way for gas to get through the gas valve. Um, up here is we, we have our uh, fan control and our high limit. Uh, this has a probe that goes into the heat exchanger. If this uh, gets hot enough, uh, too hot, uh, it will actually break the uh, power to the gas valve so that the gas shuts off and cannot continue to burn. So it has a safety built into it. It also has the uh, ability when the temperature gets to a certain amount, it turns the fan onto this furnace. And also uh, after there's a, been a call for heat, uh, it turns the fan off at when the temperature of the air gets down to a certain temperature. And that's adjustable in here. And that's set at 95 degrees right now. So that, that's actually a good setting. We recommend 85 to 95. Uh, take a look at the fan on this. This is a upflow furnace or fan sitting down on the bottom here. Let me grab my flashlight here. Looks like we have a little bit of an issue here. Uh, the, the filter has been sucked into the, uh, the pulley of the motor. It's actually riding up against both pulleys. Uh, this is uh, somewhat common when uh, there's not when there's no supports to hold the filter in place, and you can see all the fiberglass shavings that have collected into the motor that from rubbing up against the filter here. Uh, so we'll go ahead and pull that filter out. And you can actually see the imprint where the uh, belt has been riding on, on that. And all this fiberglass is gone. And then uh, you can see how dirty this filter is. This is pretty dirty. That's probably one of the reasons why it got sucked into the fan. is from all the dirt that collected and plugged up the filter. So it created a, more of a suction to the fan. Okay, I... Uh, uh, reinstalled the bracket that holds the filter in and I did reinstall the, the dirty filter I want, and the reason I want to show what the heat rise the heat rise is one of the uh, diagnostic things that we measure to see how uh, efficient and how much air we're moving through the furnace the key is to move as much air as possible and a high heat rise is um, usually 
caused by a dirty filter or too small of a duct work. Uh, anything that restricts airflow gives us a high heat rise. So a dirty filter, this should show us a high heat rise. Uh, I reattached the bracket and I screwed it on so that uh, that shouldn't happen again where the filter gets uh, sucked into the blower. Um, so anyhow, uh, we'll go ahead and put the covers on. We're going to measure uh, a few temperatures here. One is we want to get the temperature of the air when the fan comes on. After uh, about five minutes of runtime, we want to get the temperature of the heat rise. That's the difference between the return air and the supply air. And then uh, after we turn the furnace off, we're going to get the temperature of the air at the fan off temperature, which should be about 95 degrees because we get to adjust that from this control here. I'm going to put the covers back on and uh, then we'll do that. Okay, a bit more about this furnace. Uh, this is a, this furnace, uh, one of the things we look for is how old is the furnace? Um, well, uh, I look for any clue that tells me how old the furnace is. I know for, um, based on this house, this is the original furnace installed in the house. I can tell it just from experience. Uh, so it's at, it's at least 20, 20 years old. But one thing I did find in here is uh, this is the uh, City of Bozeman gas inspection um, tag from 1976, which this uh, is... Uh, authorizing the gas line work um, so this house was built in 1976 that's uh, that's uh, the what the, when this furnace was installed so I have a pretty good idea um, based on that tag and sometimes you can find stuff like that uh, laying around uh, this is a natural draft furnace so um, the uh, draft hoods right here uh, it drafts naturally up through the uh, uh, chimney, which is B-Vent. And uh, it's probably somewhere between 60 and 70% efficient. Uh, we'll get an idea when we take the, uh, the uh, combustion analysis on it. WXTV your online source for weatherization information, techniques, and expert advice.